I uh, grew up climbing trees. And to me, climbing trees was the start of adventure. How many people here climb trees? Okay, it's in New York. You climb buildings a lot. Anybody don't climb trees? Uh, okay, someone rose their, ha rose their hand both times. <laughs> and in case most of you have climbed a tree, it's a great place to experience ecology. And I grew up not climbing trees like this. This is a little complicated, this oak tree but the easily branched trees in my backyard in the Midwest. And uh, as I grew older, I began to realize that it could actually turn into a serious adventure for me. And I found scientists who climbed trees. Here is one, Pierre Berner. Uh, he is actually looking at a branch here that's growing out into the abyss in Costa Rica and painting rings around the branch to see how fast it grows. The branches on the other side stay small, so the trees tend to topple in the direction where he's hanging. And uh, someone walked by, a farmer walked by, and thought he was an insane telephone repairman. <laughs> this is the nature of adventure at times. And then it became more and more fun when I met Steve Sillett and some of the people working in California and the western coast. And we began climbing some of the redwoods and uh, other huge trees out there. Uh, here's Steve making a transfer from one tree to the next. And you're just swinging through the branches, having a grand old time. And you can find at the tops of these trees branches that are so immense that they have two or three yards of soil on them and trees growing out of the trees, out of view from the ground, a whole forest and 300 feet up in uh, California redwood stands. Okay, adventures. What is an adventure? To me, an adventure is the process of finding a story. If you're a writer, an adventure is sitting there with a piece of paper and thinking of words. If you're a biologist, you're going out into the world. Sometimes you're taking risks. Sometimes you're just looking for natural history stories. Whatever it is, it's an adventure. So I hope all the kids here think about life in terms of adventures. And they don't have to be complicated. You can find great adventures even with acorns. So we started off with the uh, oak tree. Here's an acorn weevil. These creatures look like they should be from Mars, or at least the Amazon. They have long noses that uh, project down the length of the acorn, or half the length of the acorn precisely. And uh, they're floating around New York City right now at the tops of oak trees. And what they do, I found out, is they drill into these acorns as if they were oil rigs drilling. You can see that the head is perfectly spherical and they just move the head back and forth and slowly drill down to the middle of the acorn, turn around, lay an egg and fly away. And then a little grub grows up in the acorn and eats that yummy acorn meat. Eventually it gets pretty plump and it has to come out, it's tricky. So uh, here's the first look of that grub out into the outer world. Lovely world outside. How do you get out if you're an acorn grub? You're a little bit fat. It turns out it's something like, watch, a, uh, well, let's see, toothpaste out of a tube. You just have to kind of squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, and then you fall to the ground, plop, and you turn into an adult acorn weevil. And you've left a little hole behind where you came out. And now all kinds of other creatures can enter that acorn. And this is this unfolding story of the life inside an acorn. And these are happening all over the place. Here's an acorn that has been invaded by all kinds of things. There are snails, there are little parasitic wasps, uh, cocoons, there's a millipede, there are fungi. You can have a whole community. Every element, if you think of in a forest, can occur in a single acorn. So how do you turn this into a story? To find the story, you get a bunch of acorns, you put them in a pail of water. The acorns with critters inside of them float, and you start looking inside, and you begin to see who arrives first, who arrives later, when the acorn becomes more and more hollow. The last stage are when slavery ants move in, and some other kinds of ants. Really cool stories. Now, acorns we don't think of uh, mice, and squirrels as being the heroes of an acorn story, but it turns out that they are. This is a white-footed mouse from the East Coast here. They eat a lot of acorns like the squirrels do. 
And it turns out, a friend of mine buried 1,000 acorns uh, in New Jersey. And he came out the next morning, and every one of them was gone. It turns out the mice and the squirrels steal from each other all the time. And the acorns essentially fly around the landscape, being dug up and carried from place to place, and possibly can go for miles before somebody forgets it, and it turns into an oak tree. So congratulate the squirrel for good work and the mouse.